Hi guys, Melvin here from Neuron Digital. In this short tutorial, I'm going to be guiding you how to use the web to app template for Android. I will be showing you how to import all the source code in Android Studio, how to use the online drag and drop configuration tool to configure your app. I will be also showing you some small things like how to change the colors of the app, how to implement the, the ads, how to change the app icon, and ultimately how to export the app to an APK file for Google Play. <music> Okay, so let's get started. When you purchase the source code, you should have a folder which looks like this. Let's open it. We need to import this folder here into Android Studio. So let's open up Android Studio and click on Open Existing Android Studio Project. Select that folder and click Open. Okay, so when the template loads, the first thing we should do is to test it. So press the play button and then we're going to try it on the emulator. If it runs successfully like so, you're good to go. If not, you may want to look at log it here and perhaps try to see what errors you encounter. If you have instant run turned on, make sure to turn it off from, from the Android Studio settings. And once the project runs successfully, the second step is to rename the package name. So let's go to app here, Java, com, and we need to rename this web to app here, the Neuron Digital, and you might also want to rename the com here. So to do this, make sure you have compact, empty, middle packages unhighlighted like this. When that's done, right click on web to app, click on refactor, rename, and I'm going to rename my package name to my app name. Click refactor, click on do refactor, and we are going to do the same for Neuron Digital. So right click on Neuron Digital, refactor, rename, click on rename current, and click refactor. Once you do that, we need to put the same package name in the Gradle file. So open up build.gradle from the app module, and we need to put this package name in here as the application ID. So let's put it in. A package name should always be the domain name inverted. So you have your company name in here and your app name in here. Once that's done, press sync now, and you should encounter this error here. This error is basically saying that you haven't changed the Firebase JSON file, so we need to change it. To access the JSON file, you need to open up Project Files, open up App, and it is this Google Services JSON file here. Okay, so let's get a new JSON file from Firebase. Open up Firebase, click on Add Project, put in your project name, accept this checkbox here, and click Create Project. Click on Add Firebase to your Android app, put in the same package name that you used, and click register app. Click on this button to download the Google services JSON file and just copy it into app to replace the old one here. Click on overwrite. When that's done, before running the app to test it, let's go again to Android, open up the manifest file and we need to make sure that the package names in here have been renamed to the new package name. So as you can see, the package name in here is good, but the package name in here is not good. So we need to rename it. Highlight Neuron Digital and paste the new package name. And I'm going to scroll down to make sure that the other package names are correct. Okay, everything is correct. So I can press play to test the app. Okay, so the app is running correctly with the new package name. The next step is the most interesting. We need to change the actual app content. So we're going to use the drag and drop online utility for that. So let's go ahead and minimize Android Studio and open up the browser. <music> Okay, so you should go to web2app.neurondigital.com and create an account from here, register, and I'm going to create a temporary account to show you how it's done. When you purchase the source code from Code Canyon, you should have got a license purchase code, which looks something like this. If you don't have it, you should purchase the source code before continuing. Highlight this checkbox here and click sign up. As you can see, this is the dashboard. So let's start from step one. From here, you can select if you want the toolbar to be hidden or not. I'm going to select no and save. Let's go to page two or pages from here. And I'm going to create a new page. I'm going to show you how to create three types of pages. So the first page is from a URL. So let's say you want to display Google. So let's, let's put in Google here as the page title, highlight this data URL. And here I'm going to put a URL, Google. You can select these other options here to disable pull to refresh, to enable the zoom feature or to disable JavaScript. I'm going to hit save. The next page I'm going to create is a local page. So I'm going to name it local page test. And once again, I'm going to highlight the is data URL. And I'm going to put in this URL here 
as it is now, it will load an index file directly from the assets folder. So I'm going to open Android Studio and show you where it's loading it from. So if you open up the assets folder here, it will load an index file directly under it. But instead I want it to load this index file here. So we need to put MDL template article between the index file and the assets folder. So let's open up the browser once again, and I'm going to put in MDL template article between the index and the assets folder. Hit save. In the next type of page, I'm going to show you how to create it's an HTML page created directly from this utility. So the title is going to be HTML page. And now I'm going to leave this data URL unhighlighted. And I'm just going to use this HTML editor here to put in my HTML. So as you can see, you can type anything you want. You can, for example, set it as bold. Apart from text, you can also import YouTube videos and images. I'm going to show you how to import an image. So I'm going to paste it in there, insert image. And if you want the image to be 100% width, click on 100% here. Once that's done, hit save. The next step is to create the menu items to put the pages under them. So click on new menu item, put in the menu item. So for example, let's say Google here, select an icon. I'm going to select the briefcase. And from here, you can select the menu you want to put it under. I'm going to select the left navigation menu. Make sure you have Google selected and press save changes. Let's create another page for the local page. Once again, select an icon. If you want an icon, if you don't want an icon, you can select no icon from here. I'm going to select the local page and press save changes. And the final menu item is the HTML test. Select the HTML page and click save. Okay, so we have our menu items in here. If you wish, you can reorder them and make sure to press save when that's done. And if you wish to put them under a subcategory, you want to click on new menu item, put in a category name. Once again, you can select an icon from here. And this time you can ignore the page because it won't be used. Click on save. And once again, you can drag and drop the group wherever you want and to put the items under it just pull them to the right like so so the html test and the local page will now be under the group subcategory hit save i also want to note out what these two features here do the first new activity will force the menu item to be opened up in a new activity instead of in the main fragment for this case here i want to put in no and save once again and the default page will allow you to select which page is the default so if you put in zero it will Select Google as the default page, and if you select one, it will select the HTML test as the default page. Click on save once again, go to dashboard, and we're going to export the JSON file for Android Studio. So click on export JSON file, and if I go to the desktop, you can see that I have the JSON file here. So I want to import this in Android Studio, so copy it, open up Android Studio, and I want to replace this file here with it. Paste, OK, overwrite. So I have the configuration ready in Android Studio, and I want to press play again to test the app. Once the app runs, we can immediately see that the default page is the Google page, as we have selected in here. And if we open up the menu, we can see that we have the same menu items that we created in here. So we have the Google, we have a group with the HTML test and the local page, which we didn't set any icon for it. And if we open up the HTML test, we should see the HTML page that we created from this utility. And if we open up the local page, we can see that we have the local site in here, in the index file. If you are not happy with the results in your app, you can go back to the configuration tool and modify anything and save the JSON file once again and copy it to Android Studio. And when you're done, you can go to the next step. So the next step is to change the app icon. And we're going to do that from resources, from map map, right click on that. We're going to select new and image asset. And you can use this wizard to create your icon. And when you're done, press next and continue. When that's done, the next step is to open up the strings of XML file. So we're going to do that from resources, once again, values and strings of XML. And in here we have your app name in here. And these are all strings that can be translated to another language if you want. And if we scroll down, we have the advert settings and we have the rate bold settings in here. So first things first, let's set up the ads. Currently we have the test ads running. To set up the ads, you need to create an AdMob account from this link here. And AdMob will guide you to get an app ID, which you should put in here, get an interstitial ad unit ID and put it in here to replace the test ID. And you can also create an AdMob ad unit ID. And once again, you should put the ad unit ID in here to replace this test ID. The interstitial chill ad will show when the user clicks on an item on the left or right navigation menu. To change the frequency, you can change this number here. So increase this number here to make the ad display less often. The final item we should set in this file is the rate pulled API key. 
In this template, RateBolt will display a small card after the user has used the app five times, which will allow the user to rate your app from one to five. And if the user rates from one to three, it will ask the user for feedback. And if the user rates you four or five stars, it will ask the user to give you a rating on Google Play. So using RateBolt, your app will hopefully have better ratings on Google Play. So let's set up the RateBolt API key. Let's get it from RateBolt. When RateBolt opens, click on dashboard. If you don't have an account on RateBolt, you need to sign up. I already have an account, so I'm just going to log in. After you create an account, click on new app, put in your app name here. And here we have our API key, which we can copy and put in strings.xml. So I'll copy it and put it right in here. When that's done, the final thing you might want to do is to change the theme colors. To do that, open up the colors.xml. And from this XML file, you can change the primary colors of the template. So for example, this color here is the toolbar color. This color here is the status bar color. And this one is the accent color. So feel free to change these colors. And when that's done, we can export the app to an APK file for Google Play. So click on build and generate signed APK and follow this wizard to export an APK file, which then you can upload to Google Play. Thanks very much for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And feel free to put any comments that you might have below.